we need to be investing in other businesses. I'm going to talk about a couple different ways to do that. Shark Tank is a great example. You are so familiar with the show Shark Tank. Many of the sharks are actual angel investors. They're giving up. Uh, I'm even going to talk about the real estate note. Now, it's not actually the physical property, but it's the note or the security to be used specifically. Now, the money in a policyholder's cash value can earn interest by tracking a stock market index. My name is Dr. Curtis A. Merriweather Jr. And welcome to my channel. The purpose of this channel is to educate entrepreneurs to overcome common business challenges. Now, the way we do this is through education, consultation, and training support services. Now, our goal is to lower your learning curve and to accelerate your business success, scalability, and profitability. Now, our channel is unique because it's based on advanced education. As many of you know, I completed my PhD in management earlier in um, 2023. And my goal here is to share principles and education and lessons learned based on 27 years of progressive experience in the business domain. Now on my screen right now, you will see my URL. My URL has changed to Dr. Curtis Jr. Um, I'm, I am a junior. So I've changed my URL. So please be mindful of that. Now, uh, our website is on the screen, which is eightfiguregovcon.com. Definitely go give us a look. Also, as our course to a library, and I will be doing another information session in January to kick off. Now, one more announcement before I jump into our topic today. I will be launching a 2024 government contracting boot camp. The information will be in the show notes of this particular episode down below. So you definitely want to check that out. It is going to be a boot camp like no other. It is going, it's designed to accelerate your government contracting journey. Whether you're new or seasoned, you're going to get something from this boot camp. I'm going to teach some content and do some examples and do some things I've never shared on YouTube or in my government contracting community. For those who are eight figure gov kind uh, members already, you do not want to miss. Okay, let's jump into our topic. But before we do, I want you to like, share and subscribe to this, this channel and leave us a comment. Let me know if this information is being value added to you. And also give me some ideas, some other topics you would like me to talk about. Now, I have a great topic for you guys today. Now, the, on this channel, one of the things that I endeavor to do is to talk about some of those topics that, quite frankly, I don't see a lot of circulation on, on government contracting channels. So today, I would like to talk about a topic that I haven't seen discussed much, especially in the government contracting community. It's one of our value asks, one of our differentiators to talk about some of the obscure topics, those topics that may not be as popular, but are still uh, needed. Uh, they're needed. They're needed. And I'm willing to touch some of the taboo topics and some of the topics that others just don't want to touch. So today I want to talk about five investments that you need to be thinking about as a government contractor. Now, government contracting is getting rich slow. You know, I do not subscribe to those get rich quick scheme. So I want to talk about five things that you need to be either planning to do, or if you've already kind of hit some of your financial goals, some of the things you need to start putting in place uh, immediately. Let me go ahead and put my disclaimer right here. This is not financial advice. I'm not giving you any um, investment uh, strategies. I'm just simply talking about some things that you need to consider um, in your investing journey so we can preserve wealth long-term as government contractors and entrepreneurs in general. So again, this is not business advice. I'm just simply giving some, uh, some ideas for consideration. Please get with your wealth advisors and your financial professionals to come up with advice specifically for you based on your uh, context and specific situation. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, without further ado, the very first thing I would like to talk about is insurance specifically 
and index universal life insurance. This is the first uh, investment vehicle we want to talk about. Now, I talk about the IUL, known as the index universal life insurance. This is a type of insurance which is a permanent life insurance policy. Um, a while ago, you got people who are who are subscribers to whole life or term life. I like the IUL, the index. Uh, universal life insurance policy because it does two things: it gives you cash benefit or cash value, which you can which you can borrow your own money from. So there's a lot of teachings that were were out in circulation a few years ago about being your own bank. This is one of the ways to do that. The IUL, that's the Index Universal Life Insurance Policy, also has a death benefit. So when we think about insurance, we often think about the death benefit when someone passes along. You know what pays for the funeral expenses and hopefully provide some future security in the event of a loss. Now, the money in a policyholder's cash value can earn interest by tracking a stock market index secured by the issuer, such as the NASDAQ 100 or the Standard & Poor's or S&P 500. So it's going to track the stock market. Now, what I like about this is going to give you a floor and a ceiling. So even if the stock market is not performing, you're not going to lose money, but you will hit the floor amount. And when the stock market exceeds, meets or exceeds a certain threshold, you will have a cap or a ceiling. So you're not going to lose money. So you're always going to be in a position where you're making money on this policy. Um, now, you may also have a fixed rate account, and you can choose how much you want to go into each account. Now, again, these are some things I just want you to think about. I want you to consider adding the IUL, the Index Universal Life Insurance, to your portfolio for not only the death benefit, but also the cash value. But please consult with your professionals for any financial investment. Okay, I'm just giving you ideas in this video. Now, that was the first one we want to talk about, which was the IUL. Now, the next one we want to talk about, which is one of my favorites, is real estate. I can't imagine having a portfolio and you don't have real estate in it. So I want to talk briefly about real estate. So real estate, I'm going to just give some definitions. Now, I assume that we all know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about real estate. But real estate is defined as the land and any permanent structures like a home or improvements attached to the land. And you know that uh, the land itself is, is, is considered real estate, but also the building on top. We do believe over here and buying raw land. Yes, I'm just saying. Now, this can be whether natural or man-made. This is what we call real property. I'm not, I'm not going to get into a huge uh, legalese conversation today about what is real property versus other assets, but this is considered real property. Now, real estate falls into one of three categories. Um, we have residential. So this can be your homes, mobile homes, tiny homes, townhomes. We have our commercial property. This is our multifamily, also known as apartment buildings. We have office, retail, warehouses, maybe even self-storage would fall into this category. Our third um, type of real estate is industrial. This is all your factories, your farms, your mines, et cetera. Now, I want to talk about a fourth one. Um, I'm even going to talk about the real estate note. Now, it's not actually the physical property, but it's the note or the security. Um, it is the security that to that piece of property. So when you're paying money to a mortgage company or a servicer, uh, you can actually buy the underlying security called a note. That is a fourth way of investing in real estate. Now, for those who have, and I know I got some folks who are really doing very well financially, if you are an accredited investor and you want to invest alongside me in my real estate fund, I have a real estate a real estate fund that has been approved by the SEC. That's the Security and Exchange Commission. We have a fund. We're in the process of actually doing a raise. If you would like to invest alongside me, please leave me a note in the comments. I'll see it and I'll sit, we'll, we'll have an exchange. Not to get on a rabbit trail about my real estate fund, but for those who have a minimum of $50,000 they want to invest, we'll send you the legal documents. We'll do everything by the book. In accordance with the law, we are governed by the SEC in terms of how we do business. So we're going to do everything by the book. And if you're interested in that, 
please let me know. Okay, let's go into our third point. Now, our third point, I got a lot of entrepreneurs watching me on this channel. We need to be investing in other businesses. I'm going to talk about a couple different ways to do that here. So our third thing we want to talk about is business investments. Now, a business, again, I'm going to just give some definitions to make sure we're all on the same page, but these terms should be very familiar to you all, especially those who watch my channel. A business refers to an organizational enterprise entity engaged in commercial, in industrial, or professional activity. The purpose of a business is to organize some economic production of goods or service. Now, we can get involved in business investment one of three primary ways. I'm going to talk about three primary ways. Number one, that's through angel investing. This is where someone personally invests in early stage startups, leveraging um, your entrepreneurial experience to identifying to identify promising ventures. So the job of the angel investor in layman's terms is to, is to um, find or to be located by an entrepreneur looking to bootstrap their business. They may not have the money or access to capital, and you may come in as an angel investor and you may decide to invest, you know, some nominal amount into their business. That could be 25, 50, 100 million dollars. This is an angel investor. And you're doing this in exchange for some amount of equity. Shark Tank is a great example of this. You know, many of us are familiar with the show Shark Tank. Many of the sharks are actual angel investors. They're giving up a portion of their uh, proceeds in exchange for equity in another person's business. And the thought process at some point that entrepreneur is going to be successful. We know all entrepreneurs are. It's just it is what it is. The thought process is when that entrepreneur becomes successful, they'll be to pay back the principal amount uh, and some interest into, into perpetuity. That's the notion in a nutshell. Number two, you can invest in business via venture capital. This is a more sophisticated form of investor. So angel investors are, I'm gonna call the lowest, I'm second in my hierarchy, I'm gonna say venture capital. Now, venture capital is a term used to describe financing that is provided to companies and to entrepreneurs. Now, so a venture capitalist can provide backing through capital financing, technological expertise, and or managerial experiences. So in theory, you're not just getting money. You may also be getting some know-how. Now, last but not least, this is the highest form of business investment, my personal opinion. This is private equity. Private equity describes investment partnerships that buy and manage companies before selling them. Private equity firms operate these investment funds on behalf of institutional and accredited investors. Well, these are high net worth people or large organizations. So angel investor is number one. You know, oftentimes when you start a new company, you're going to look for friends, family, and fools. So typically your angel investors. Uh, fall in that category. The next level up will be venture capital. There is a famous um, venture capitalist out in the Silicon Valley um, region named, um, the name of the firm, I think it's A16Z. I think it's Horowitz Capital. Um, that's, a, that's a big one. Third, private equity. Um, in the black community, there's a guy named Robert Smith, who's a big uh, private equity guy, owns Vista Equity Partners. They do a lot of leverage buyout, leverage finance, uh, private equity to pr pretty much take over the firm. And then the goal is to make the firm better and to sell it down term downstream at a later time. So angel investors, friend, families, fools, venture capitalists, they're going to give you a portion of money, but you're going to maintain uh, ownership, the majority ownership stake in the firm. And then last but not least is private equity. And typically, not always, but in most private equity deals, uh, the private equity firm takes over the firm. Back in the day, they used to call these hostile type takeovers. They're not hostile, um, but they they do want to make sure they have majority ownership in the firm to streamline processes, improve management, 
just minimize some inefficiencies in the business to hopefully make it more profitable and sell it downstream for a profit, for not only for the general partner, the limited partners, which could be institutions in the credit or high network, high network individuals. Okay, let's keep moving. The fourth one we want to talk about is commodities. Now, we all know what commodities are, although you may not have known you can invest in commodities. Commodities take the form of, you know, say gold and silver. So the definition, a commodity is a basic good used in commerce that is interchangeable with other commodities of the same type. Commodities are often used as inputs and in producing other goods or services. So like nickel it could be used for semi in the semiconductor industry or different aluminum products. You're making different things. So a commodity is a good that goes in one way and may come out in another form. Those are commodities. Commodities can also serve as a, mean, a means of exchange. Especially in today's economy, you're hearing a lot about gold and silver investment as a hedge against inflation and, um, and, a, and, a, and a store of, of wealth or value. So, for example, you got precious metals like gold, oil, silver. Those are commodities. If you remember the movie Trading Places, they were commodity investors. If you remember the folks that Eddie Murphy worked for, um, they were commodity investors. Okay, let's keep moving. Some things I want you to think about on your government contracting journey. Next, number five, I want you to think about digital assets. Now, digital assets has a few different meanings. I want to define what I mean today when I'm talking about digital assets. A digital asset is anything stored digitally and uniquely identifiable that organizations can use to realize value. Now, digital assets cover a range of investments which include cryptocurrencies, whether we're talking Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Ethereum, or um, non-fungible tokens or NFTs. You might see some artworks, NFT artwork. These are digital assets. Digital assets for this, this conversation, we're going to also talk about bonds, ETFs, futures, index funds, mutual funds, options, REITs. REITs is a real estate investment trust, stocks, et cetera. I'm going to put all of these in the category for this conversation in the term of digital assets. Again, these are things that we should be thinking about. So what does a digital asset look like? It may look like... Um, Bitcoin investment. It may look like Ethereum. Now, when you start think, talking about um, cryptocurrency, you also have to be mindful of the blockchain. Now, the blockchain, uh, specifically, which is the kind of the network, think of the blockchain as a electronic ledger, which tracks and maintains what's coming in and out of that blockchain, for lack of a better, back, lack, lack of better terms. I'm trying to just overly simplify what this is. But you also want to think about things like smart contracts. You're going to start seeing more um, things like smart contracts, I believe, used in the government contracting space. So just be mindful. Keep your eye on digital assets. I always recommend, if you know nothing about the stock market, throw some money in the S&P 500 index. Look at the index funds, which is a basket of currencies, or excuse me, a basket of stock in a particular um index. You want to look at that as a way of hedging your risk. You may not have the bandwidth or desire to learn about the stock market, but the index fund is a great place to look. Also look at some of Warren Buffett's uh, Berkshire Hathaway stocks, A and B. Um, they have different um, they have different price structures, so that may be another great investment vehicle. We know that Warren Buffett is considered by many as one of the world's greatest investors. So you can invest alongside Warren, for lack of a better term, by investing in the Berkshire Hathaway stock ticker. Um, look at Berkshire Hathaway A and then look at B. Those are his stocks. And also look at some index funds. Okay. Last but definitely not least. And we could make this video way longer, but I just want to get in, get out very quickly here. And I want to talk about some other things that you may want to consider from an investing perspective. 
Of course, you got your 401ks. We all are familiar with that, especially our, uh, if we were formerly employed, our previous employer may offer the 401k. If you are an employer today, you're probably offering a 401k with a match or without. You got annuities, you got art, art, great store, future value. You have Roth IRAs, and one of my favorites are self-directed IRAs, which is an IRA, but you can kind of tell it where you would like to invest some of your funds. So that's all I have for you in this particular video. But the goal here was to kind of get you thinking. So whether you've made a boatload of money already, whether you're planning to make some money, I need you kind of thinking about where are you going to store that value so that you can preserve and grow your wealth. So while you're out here doing the hard work of growing businesses, I want you to also think about how you're going to grow your wealth passively. So that was the purpose of this video. And definitely go back and watch some of my old videos. And I'm going to see you in a future video. Until next time.